Warning, this show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. The show was produced by Geek Happy Network, creators of the very best in audible Oracle entertainment. In other words, podcasts. If you enjoy listening to The Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts. This, this is smorgasbord. There's a fun tradition in the Czech Republic of keeping carp in the bathtub during Christmas. Magic is it a, carp? It's a magic carp. Or is it a pet? Is it a food? Or can it be both? Would you eat your pet? I don't know. How do you feel about eating fluffy? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be here to find out. I'm Mick, and here is my co-host... Angel. And welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. Mm. So, like we said, today we're talking about carp. Magic carp. Magic carps <laughs> in the bathtubs <laughs> in Christmas in the Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they have big tubs. Yeah. It's kind of mean to keep fish in your tub. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better, I guess, than putting it in like a bowl or whatever. This is true. But yeah. I heard the story when we went to Prague last year, and apparently it's a thing. This lady I went to Prague last year. Did you? No, not last year. The year before. Oh. The year before the year before. <laughs> 2016. <laughs> so the year before the, the year, year before, before the yeah. year before. Wow, it's been that long. Yeah. All I did was eat, <laughs> but I did not eat any carbs. <laughs> no? Did you, know, did you ever hear about the story of the carp in the bathtub? Not at all. Oh. Well, it's a pretty cool one. I think <laughs> <laughs> you should very much explain it to me. <laughs> yeah, so we'll go through a little bit of it. I heard you did some research into carp festivals, so we'll find some time to talk about that too. That sounds cool. I tried to <laughs> do some research, but I got very distracted <laughs> <laughs> by magic carps. Um, video games, oh, but not the magic carp variety. Not Pokemon Go. Or no, I actually. Did you know that there was a magic carp game that I played for a what? little bit? You raise your magic carp and then you make a battle by jumping to <laughs> see whose magic carp can jump oh, the highest. I think I've heard about this. It's actually really cute. <laughs> and then eventually, every time you lose or something, you just your magic carp just gets stronger or whatnot. Uh, yeah, you can train your magic carp, but mine got taken away by a Spiro. What? <laughs> As he was jumping midair. Oh, that's so sad. So, so you can lose your magic carp. Oh man. Due to unfortunate can circumstances. They evolve, right? Can they evolve? Um, in this not one? in this game. They what? don't. They're just magic carps forever. <laughs> <laughs> that game sounds ridiculous. It in is a good ridiculous. way. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I don't. Obviously, in the Czech Republic, I don't think they have magic carps. <laughs> in or the Pokemon so you sense, know. or so Maybe we know. Maybe on the DL. Yeah. But for those of people who don't know, the Czech Republic is located in Central Europe. It's to the east of Germany and to the north of Austria. And in fact, for maybe a lot of people don't know, it's actually a very old country, rich with culture. It's a lot. At some point, it was during the time of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, for example, that was where kind of the center of the world was. So you could think of it as like, I don't know, the New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> but it was a pretty Prague was a pretty big and prominent city back, back hundreds of day. years ago. Yeah, and you can tell because all the architecture there and all the it's just beautiful. Yeah, and like you can tell that in the past this was a rich AF. Yeah, country. exactly. Like oh man, there were so many. It's it's a beautiful city. It is. It was like my fa- It was I think for the longest time it was the city I wanted to go to, like top of my list. So when I got there, I thought I'd be like overhyping myself. But then I got there and it like exceeded the expectations that I had, which were already high. So you didn't have the Paris syndrome. No. That's when people oh go God, to Paris yeah. and get very disappointed by See, yeah. how smelly it is. Yeah. Or how not as romantic as they yep. thought it was mm-hmm. from seeing it on yeah. Instagram. Yeah, actually, <laughs> Paris for me was the least attractive city I wanted to go to in France or in Europe in general. And when I got there... It's the, it was the opposite of Prague, where I already <laughs> had such low expectations, and it still sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Even lower. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the first day there, I got mugged, so. Oh, no. That was fun. But then we mugged her back, so. Oh, Suck that on that. Sucks. Great. 
crazy lady. You got mugged by a crazy lady? It was like a family, like a mom and kids, and they were stabbing us with pens because they were trying to get us <laughs> to sign stuff. Oh, what? Yeah, then they took my wallet, and my brother's like, do you have your wallet? I'm like, no. And he walks up to the girl and just grabs the wallet from her. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this one? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> wow, this makes me want to go to Paris less. Yeah. And it's actually on the bottom of my yeah. to-go list. And then we tried to scream for the police, and no one was like, nobody really cares. And How do you say police in French? I don't know. My dad was just screaming police. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We looked like a bunch of crazy Asians, I think. And everyone was like, what are these people doing? Why like, are they okay, yelling? <laughs> it's racism. <laughs> anyway, um, the one interesting fact I found out about the Czech Republic when I was there was nowadays the Czech Republic is one of the most, or if not one of the, the most secular country in the world. Um, meaning most of them don't have any kind of formal affiliation to any kind of religious institution. According to a Pew Research study in 2017, 72% of Czechs don't identify to a specific religious group. Or In fact, in Eastern Europe, Estonia comes far next to the Czech Republic with 56. Um, most of Central and Eastern Europe are somewhere where majority of people believe in some kind of religion. Um, but aside from, yeah, so aside from the Czech Republic and Estonia, really the rest of the Europe still are the majority religious believers, and Czech Republic seems to be the most secular of all of them. Nice. Um, if you want to compare this to us in Canada, in Canada it's about 57% of people don't apl- um, identify to a religious group, and in the United States it's about 39%. Um, of the 72% of Czechs who don't identify to a specific group, 46 tr- 46-ish percent describe their religion as nothing in particular, while 25% identify as atheist. That's um, pretty high. Yeah. Pretty high. Um, For a place with such beautiful churches. Yeah, right? So, um, interestingly enough, it wasn't always like that for the Czech Republic. Like you mentioned, and from my experience as well, being in Prague, there's a lot of churches there. So... For as late as the early 20th century, the Czech Republic was widely Christian, mostly Roman Catholic, um, as this is quite evident when you go travel there. Um, if we want to know a little bit of what happened, well, without going much into it, the fall of religion or Christianity for the Czech Republic in part was the move to independence from the Hats- Habsburg monarchy in the early 1900s. As Roman Catholicism, the primary religion back in the Czech Republic, was associated as part of the monarchy, so upon independence, the Czech people eventually moved away from the church. Um, this goes back to our last episode. Yeah, of transmorgification. Transubstantiation. Yeah. That so word. word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so over the past few decades, eventually, religion just kind of, or Christianity just kind of disappeared from the Czech Republic. Um, this isn't mean though that most of them are just like anti-spiritual or whatnot i think nowadays there's a bigger movement towards more individualized spiritual spiritualization or whatever for them some of them are not organized yeah not really organized like some of them still believe in magic or superstition and stuff like that um but as the czech republic does have a history of being christian or roman catholic christmas then became a big part of the country's culture as for any country, they celebrate Christmas a bit differently from everybody else. They have their own specific cultures and rituals that come into it. For instance, rather than Santa Claus bringing presents on Christmas Day, they celebrate Christmas by believing in, I'm going to butcher this, Jesse, Jesse Sek, or Baby Jesus, who I brings who gifts on Christmas. Czech. Oh. And he said my pronunciation of chimney cakes is awful. Chimney <laughs> cakes? Yeah. You know, those spir- they're kind of hollow. Yeah. They wrap it around like a hot iron thing. And it oh, it. yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. That is an Eastern Central Europe thing. Trudelnik. I don't know. I'm yes. I'm definitely saying it wrong. Yeah, it's like Trudelnik or something. Trudelnik. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I remember having those. And they have ones with Nutella and oh, so strawberry. Good. Oh, yeah. That's where all my travel money went. <laughs> yep. Essentially, it was that and gelato when I was <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of goulash and Ooh, Trudelnik. I didn't have a lot of I did, in Prague, we went on a beer tour with my brothers. Man, did we have so many stories about Prague. We met, like, we got drunk with a bunch of um, <laughs> Swedish people, actually. Nice. Um, I can't remember their names. Anyway, it was the funniest experience of my life, because, you know, usually here in North America, as an Asian, 
in the dating scene, you're not like seen in the higher levels of attraction by most people. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> there, we were hanging out with these um, three Swedish guys, and they're, you know, not the most a- they're attractive enough, I guess. And they started talking about their insecurities about how like, oh, we're never gonna get a girl hanging out with you guys. Like, you're gonna with get you guys, like, all the girls, and we're like, why? Because you, you know you're like Asian and stuff. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was a diss at first. Yeah, I thought it was a diss because in <laughs> North America it's the opposite experience. <laughs> oh, my so brothers are like, maybe we should move to guys. Europe. <laughs> hey, I want to move to Europe. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, no, we ended up hanging out. We had such a great time. We met a few people. From all around the world. I think we even... Oh, that was a different country. But anyway, it was great. Um, but yeah, Trudel Nick's great. Oh, um, right. But going back to Christmas in the Czech Republic. Yeah, so for them, instead of Santa Claus, they believe Jay-Z... Jay-Z? Jay-Z, Jay-Z Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Jesus brings their gifts on Christmas Eve. Um, St. Nicholas, or Miklaus, is the saint who Santa Claus is based on. Actually, they also believe he makes an appearance in December five but it's important to note here that it isn't santa claus the man in red that we know they actually some people might even be offended if you call him santa claus to them saint nicholas is or saint, I bet saint he nicholas more is, sensibly. yeah he well uh, <laughs> <laughs> he he is believed to appear in bishop's garb oh like maybe traditional not. <laughs> bishop's garb um, and accompanied by an angel and a devil who come bringing gifts. So in some way, there's this whole naughty and nice thing still going on. But Wait, does the devil also give gifts? I, I think the devil gives bad gifts. Like a like the potato. Shitty gifts. Yeah. Like a moldy potato. <laughs> like a rock. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. Nice. Um, I mean, you can paint rocks. Yeah. Hobby. Yeah. Some people have pet rocks. That was oh. a thing back in the day. Yeah. Uh, pet rocks. <laughs> Um, when it comes to food, there are a ton of different customs in Christmas as well that revolve around, well, food. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, for instance, they believe that during Christmas dinner, you could tell your fortune by cutting an apple in half and counting the number of corners in the core. Four, four corners on the core is bad luck, while five is good luck. Corners? Yeah, so I when you cut the apple core, it would be like corners. Oh, yeah. I guess I never <laughs> cut an apple. A apple. An half. apple <laughs> in half. I just, just kind of eat them. Eat yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but for them, they cut it in half. Um, another one apparently is using shells of walnuts as tiny boats in water to tell your fortune. So the way this works oh, is... that's cute. Yeah, you get a little um, water basin of sorts, I guess. Um, you put the walnut shell... You put a little candle on the walnut shell and let it float on the water. Um, there's a bunch of different things that could happen here. From what I've read, um, if it stays at shore, if it doesn't move... You don't expect any changes in the year. If it sinks right away, you're probably going to die. <laughs> oh, if it touches harsh. other boats, you're going to expect friendship. So a lot of it's, you know, kind of based on how pretty straightforward, I guess. Don't, tell um, a nut, don't let a nut tell you your future. You yeah. make your own future. Well, this one, some of it's a candle, too. So if the candle dies out, you're going to have complicated emotional relationships. Mm, um, emotions. Yeah, so something like that. <laughs> I like the one when it spins in the circle. It's just you don't know what to do with your life. So <laughs> I think that's mine. I feel like, yeah, same. Same. Maybe we should try this walnut thing. Yeah. I feel it like could. it would just sink. Unless the candle is really tiny. Yeah, we should. I thought it would be fun. We'll try the walnut thing. Okay. But we won't do it in Christmas. We'll just do it for fun. Midsummer. Hopefully not all Midsummer of them sink. Midsummer walnut yeah. divination. Yeah, right? Um, another one that you might actually enjoy is that apparently if you fast for a day from the morning of the 24th, you open yourself to the opportunity of seeing a vision of a golden pig. <laughs> which, if you see it, you're either going to likely pass out from hunger, but at least it'll be a sign of good luck. <laughs> if you wake up again. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, if you, hung- you hunger yourself enough, you might see a pig. Which I <laughs> think is don't see a delusional. Pig? I don't know. Well, if you don't see a pig, then you just don't have good luck. Oh, you're just going to have sucks. luck <laughs> of different sorts. <laughs> Someone um, can totally troll me and just, like, wave a pack of bacon <laughs> in my face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, this used to take the form of a pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gold. We put, I don't know, coloring on it. Don't paint the bacon. Yeah. <laughs> um, they also believe in certain foods giving protection against evil, such as garlic and honey. Another tradition is Christmas dinner, which invo- revolves around the carp, which we're going to focus more on today. Magic carp. Exactly. Um Traditionally, a Christmas dinner in the Czech Republic would consist of carp soup, fried carp, and potato salad. 
which is what, again, inspired us to do the episode in the first place. Um, so what is it about this carp? Uh, why do they even keep it in the bathtubs and all of that? <laughs> Um, Where do you get the carp? Do yeah. you get it at the supermarket? Well, do you catch it yourself <laughs> with your bare hands? Um, where they get the carp is usually it's from markets <laughs> who sell yeah. carp. They During Christmas time, they arrive in these big vats of carp that you just kind of pick and buy your own. Um, like instead of a Christmas turkey. Yeah, exactly. And alive. Yeah. Um, for those people who don't know, carp is... The carp used for this tradition is nothing special. It's the common carp, or also known as the European carp. It's actually native to Europe. It's why it's called the European carp. And it's, I mean, it's not the best fish in the world, and it's pretty, contra- it's like Hawaiian pizza, I guess. Like some people <laughs> like them, some people don't. <laughs> um, it's a slimy bottom feeder fish, and I know that, you know, usually we associate bottom feeder with something negative in metaphoric terms. In terms of fish, it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad fish being bottom feeder. They could be delicious. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, if you think about other bottom feeder fish, lobster, halibut, those mm-hmm. are all bottom feeder fish, and they're usually pretty expensive and well-liked by most people. So just bringing it up, bottom feeder fish doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Just metaphorically. Yeah. <laughs> But a slimy fish <laughs> <laughs> um, makes this fish quite unattractive. Today, though, it is the third most frequently introduced species in the world. It's very easy to breed this fish. That's probably why it's one of the most introduced species in the world for farming purposes. Now, well, how big is a carp? If you're feeding, like, Christmas dinner to a big family, it's pretty can one carp Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I... Back in my fish cutting days, we used to cut oh up right. um, you were a fish gutter. grass carp. And grass carp would come almost the size of a black cod. So it'd be like almost 15 to 20 pounds big. Ooh, Probably wow. we've seen some that's the size of my whole, the length of my whole arm or even more just for the body. Whoa. So they're pretty big. Um, worldwide, Ch- China is the largest producer for commercial purposes of carp, accounting for 70% of the production. So like China's the production of everything. Right. <laughs> Big they space, win. big everything. Yeah, they're probably worldwide and everything. On the other hand, the United States did introduce carp in the 19th century for food purposes in the States. But it's rarely eaten today and generally seen as pests. Um, my experience, I went to New Orleans once and they do fried carp there. I think that's maybe one of the few places where it's still pretty common. I love carp. I had it there. Fried carp is really good. I mean, I don't think I've ever had carp. Then again, I can't actually tell the difference <laughs> between fish. Right. Whenever I get fish and chips, they're like, do you want halibut or haddock <laughs> or whatever? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel you there. I mean, sometimes it's not between halibut and cod. The only no, like, reason you could tell the difference usually is the texture. Mm. Cod's much more flaky than halibut from what I remember. The only fish but I yeah. eat recently is just filet of fish <laughs> so crazy. And I don't even know what kind of fish that is. I think I've had a filet of fish in Mc- McDonald's, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've only yeah. had that maybe once in my life. Oh, I hated it. it. I can't stand the thought of a filet of fish. Really? Oh, yeah, wow. even the thought it's of like it. Yeah. Probably my favorite McDonald's food right now because <laughs> I have a buy one get one free coupon. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. They have the fish and chips thing now, right? Right. In McDonald's. But have I you tried it? The, I don't eat the chips. Oh, so it's not right. quite worth it. Fair enough. Um. So yeah, that's a little bit of the carp. Um, how did so? How did this little common carp become then such an important part of Christmas for the Czechs? Because it's magic. Sure. <laughs> Very. Magic. Magical. Magic. Magic carp. Carp. How carp? <laughs> <laughs> um, one reason is the fact that a common carp is also known as the European carp, like we mentioned, and that means it's native. It's actually, and it's actually native to Central Europe, which includes the Czech Republic. As a native fish, then, che- the Czechs eventually learned how to grow and farm carps commercially, eventually making the highly available fish. So, so it's not surprising then to meet families of Czechs with hundreds and hundreds of years ago and generation with generations of carp raising experience. So it's the Czechs kind of know how to grow carp. That's kind of... Make them big and juicy. The thing. Yeah, exactly. Big, juicy, succulent carp. And slimy. Yeah. Yeah, like slimy. I would long assume that the sliminess would go away after you cook it. Yes, I know. I mean, it, it it leaves a flavor of sometimes right. because they're bottom feeders. Sometimes some fish could be kind of muddy in flavor. Um, but it also I'm also kind depends of imagining on preparation. It kind of like an okra. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, Oak Creek is a good example of what slimy would feel like. Um, also, since it is really easy to farm and breed carp, carp then eventually became a pretty good economical choice. Um, high supply means it became fairly cheap. So it's a big fish with a lot of meat, sold at low price. It's easy to kind of assume why then the fish became quite a hit in the Czech Republic. But another reason that com- another reason also then comes from the Catholic past of the Czech Republic. As during the holidays, especially during Christmas time, it became common practice to fast or abstain from meat, making fish the protein alternative during the festive season. So usually you'd find a lot of Catholics or whatnot would be fasting or abstaining, meaning they don't eat one meal a day, and also also means that they don't eat meat. Um, Is so this a common thing for Lent, too? I think so, yeah. Because um, in back in L.A., I know they have... McDonald's actually have specials on filet fish right. on certain days because they know people aren't eating burgers. Yeah, exactly. So that's directly related to that, too. Um, so it's from the fact that the carp is then native and common in Central Europe, most families end up keeping eating carp during the holidays as well, right? Because they're fasting from meat. So you can say then the history of eating carp during Christmas is a combination of both practical and religious reasons to begin with. But eventually this practical diet then became tradition, passed down through the generation. Now another thing that people could wonder about is why then do they use a bathtub for (laughs) carp? (laughs) If they eat carp during the holidays, what's the deal with them keeping it in the bathtub? So you don't have to buy a tank for one day. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's, That's pretty much the reason for it. Just like how the practicality of eating carp was because it was so accessible and for religious reasons. The tradition of keeping a carp in the bathroom also roots from practical reasons. Um, As the population grew in the Czech Republic and this tradition form of having carp during the holidays, demand for carp increased during Christmas. Or the demand for carp also increases during Christmas. Meaning everybody in the Czech Republic wanted carp for Christmas Day. Now imagine this. Everybody wanted a fresh, live fish to buy on christmas day the bigger the population obviously make it harder for logistically for that to happen especially in major cities like prague these cities became a logistical nightmare because everyone chooses to buy the same the carp in the same day and because the farms the fish farms weren't actually in the city they'd have to transport all this carp over to the city and imagine they don't want them frozen no (laughs) back then i think also, that was hundreds of years ago. You could assume there's not a lot of ice. freezing technology <laughs> or ice. Exactly. And there's also the belief that carp was better tasting if you just killed it on the day rather than keeping it cold and Sad. keeping it live. Which a lot of, you know, generally with fish, that's yes. kind of how it works. Um, so f- rather than having carp vendors pop up only on Christmas, even Christmas Day, d- to account for all the logistics on these cities... A lot of these vendors would appear a few days earlier so people can have more flexibility to buy the carp. Um, but this leads us to a little problem, because the best way to eat carp, which you mentioned, is having it fresh or live. If you kill the carp, you want to kill the carp just before you eat it. So if you buy a carp early, you're left with finding a way to keep the carp alive until Christmas. On the other hand, if you wait too long, you're left with remain you're left to buy whatever carp these vendors have left, which usually means it's not the best choice of carp. The runts. Yeah. Or worst case, you're left with no carp at all. Oh. So for buying those buying carp earlier, the big question is where do you keep a live carp? And naturally In the toilet. No. <laughs> Ew, no. Maybe if it's a big toilet. <laughs> like, imagine keeping a 20-pound carp. It's like, all right, is Just this... put its face in the water. <laughs> it's like, Johnny, is this carp or is this lunch? <laughs> or is it <that> poop? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they ended up keeping it in the bathtub. Um, because you do want to keep the carp alive, and you also want to keep it happy and healthy. And you can't just keep a big fish in a container that fits just the size of fish. Because generally, for fish-keeping practices... Different fish require different sizes, and most fish require tens and maybe a hundred times the size of their actual size in terms of water size to allow them to swim around and be happy. So a bathtub was a pretty good alternative. You gotta kill them when they're happy. Yeah, exactly. Tastes like happy. Yeah, imagine a stressed carp and it's just not good. Yeah, a sad carp will taste sad. You might yeah Yeah. (laughs) inherit its anxiety. Exactly. 
And you don't want that in Christmas Day. No. Yeah, all your <laughs> walnuts are going to start sinking. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's also... B- um, a part of it also believes that by keeping the carp in the bathtub, it makes the carp cleaner. I'm assuming it's because it's the only fish in a very clean tank um, mm-hmm. for a few days. Um, you know, so then it keeps the carp a little bit cleaner than keeping it in a dirty pool of sorts. With 50 other carps. Yeah. One conundrum that comes up is when you have a family of young children. Because having a fish in the bathtub naturally means the children will... Go and poke it. Yeah, <laughs> go and poke it and also think of it as a pet. Uh-huh. So how do you keep a child, how do you think a child will act when they see this little animal in the bathtub? They probably will have, start seeing it as a pet, have a relationship and have, name it. maybe name it and all of that. Um, so to no surprise, there's a lot of Czech families out there with horror stories of pet carps mysteriously disappearing. Aww. I think actually a tour guide had a similar experience where... It was a, uh, a similar tragic experience where she named her carp and all that, and then the next day the carp was gone, and the parents didn't really have a way to explain it to she them. She should have freed Willie. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, I would watch this film. Yeah. But tiny <laughs> Czech child tries <laughs> to free the, the bathtub yeah. fish. <laughs> and she's being restrained, so you just watch the carp jump over the bathtub. <laughs> and then flop the on the tiles. <laughs> <laughs> Flop its way into the towels, <laughs> jump into the toilet, and sink in. <laughs> flush it, flush yep. it, and get stuck because it's too fat. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. really, I really want some bathtub fish. <laughs> it sounds interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, so I guess for the most part, our festive mad check carps. <laughs> <laughs> mad check carps. <laughs> Pun. <laughs> <laughs> these festive, th- these festive Czech carps, really the the history of the bathtub comes from practical and um, religious reasons, which I think has been a pretty common through everything theme this yeah. past th- these past episodes. Um, yeah, welcome yeah. to the Church of Hawaiian Pizza. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, it's a smorgish church, I guess. <laughs> now, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So um, a big part, of the next part of this, obviously, as we're, we are a food podcast, is looking to how it's cooked and if it actually tastes good. Um, so for Christmas, as we mentioned, carp is used to make two dishes, fried carp and carp soup. The carp soup is often served first and then the carp and potato. And then the, the carp soup is often served first and then the fried carp served as a main course with a side of fr- potato salad. The soup is made from the offal of the fish or its innards. And it's some, and to some, it's actually said that it's tastier than the fish itself, mm. or the fried fish bit itself. Um, the fish soup usually includes a number of different spices and vegetables. It sounds pretty good. Um, I don't know. It's a, I guess each their own. I don't know if some people like fish innards, but some. F- I don't think I've ever had fish innards. Right. I'm not very. Um, what is the word? Experienced <laughs> in. F- fish eating fair enough i think um yeah because my mom doesn't like handling fish oh, understandable fair enough. smells and she's also a vegetarian ah so yeah that's fair i mean i don't know my favorite fish is the milk fish and my favorite part of the milk fish is the inner part it's like the fatty the fatty guts the fatty, the fatty guts it's mm-hmm. so good um the main course on the other hand as we mentioned is the fried fish so they use the carp meat and it's breaded and fried to get the carp a little tender and to minimize the smell, it's usually dipped in milk, salted, and sprinkled with lemon juice. It's then covered with flour, bread comes in egg, and then fried to a crisp. That sounds good. Yeah. Traditionally. I just like fried everything. Yep. Yeah. And it's actually, yeah. I mean, like I said, for me, carp, fried carp is pretty good. It is probably like high up chips, there. Just with yeah. potato salad instead of pretty much also fried potato yeah mm-hmm. instead of a fried potato it's a potato salad it's a mix of potatoes peas onions carrots parsley celery pickled gherkins eggs and mayo sounds great mayo yeah so some checks would keep a few scales of the fish in their po- wallet or purse in hopes that it'll bring prosperity to them for the following year um the big question now i guess is like does it de- like is it good <laughs> <laughs> yes i have another question though yeah uh, wha- if you are keeping a fish in your bathtub, how do you take a shower and or bath? <laughs> do you jump in? <laughs> <laughs> I guess like, you kind of bathe with the carp, I guess. I don't know. Maybe That's they awkward. Have it's like, don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they use the toilets. Oh. 
But then where do you relieve yourself? Yeah, exactly. They might also just just hose themselves. Hose off themselves, outside. yeah. Or oh, it's use cold it over there. Pour pour water on themselves, like <laughs> I don't know. In the Philippines back then, we just we didn't have not ch- not sometimes when the shower wouldn't work, we just grab a tub and kind of douse, yourself. douse ourselves <laughs> with water. So that's probably what they did. Um, I'll assume they do it outside or something. That's actually a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they jumped in the pool. They jump, or maybe the va- the empty vats of carp now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> maybe the carp will eat some of the soap. I yeah. don't know. Or maybe they just don't shower. I don't know. Mm, it's a very smelly Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, is it carp smell or is it People's people smell? smell. Hmm. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think, again, for carp, it depends if you like it or not. I like it. Some people don't. Um, the one issue, though, that does come up about carp is that it's a very bony fish. So you tend to find a lot of bones in the meat, um, which means in Christmas in pro- in the Czech Republic, the hospitals are usually <laughs> packed with people packed with, with like people bone shards stuck choke. in their throat. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think the walnut does Yeah. for, for this incident? I don't know. <laughs> Just what? shoots out of the water. <laughs> like, nope. Pretty much. Yeah, um, but as this is a tradition in a country that is dying of tradition, not dying of tradition, but is shifting in their preferences for tradition, today, though, keeping carp in the bathtub and buying carp for Christmas is not as popular as it used to be. In the advent of freezing technology, for example, most families now buy the carp, kill it, and freeze it instead before Christmas, which means they don't have to keep it alive in the bathtub. Practical. Yeah, the <laughs> issues of the kids falling attached to the carp, I think, have a <laughs> role to play in this hey as Johnny, well. for Christmas, we're killing your baby pet. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't know if you want... I mean, I don't know. I believe that it helps the kid deal with death. That's true. I don't know. It's like, you're I eating know. this. Yeah. You should know where it came from. Yeah, the exactly. The bathtub. Like, I, I mean, my parents grew up in a farm, so they know... They knew about how animals died and stuff, and they turned out okay. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but even worse, though, is most families, especially younger generations, choose not to even eat carp anymore. Like we mentioned, it's a little bit of a preferential Passing. thing. Yeah. So maybe it's a combination of their secular state now, or maybe it's most people no longer fast for Christmas, um, or they have just general food preferences of people. But most people generally, yeah, most the, most the young Czechs nowadays probably just do away with the tradition, just eat what they want for Christmas. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad though. Yeah, tradition shift. Yeah. Unfortunately, and fortunately, there's yeah. some real crappy, <laughs> crappy traditions out yep. there. Yeah. So that's kind of the thing about festi- mm-hmm. festival carp. Festival <laughs> carp. <Freshival carpsh. laughs> I have to say, the Airbnb I stayed in uh, in Prague had the biggest bathtub. It was really? massive. <laughs> I wonder how many carbs they could have fit in there. Yeah. Was it a big house or was it, it a was big It was an fam- apartment, oh. but it was quite large. It was a two-bedroom apartment, and the hosts actually lived there, too. Right. And then it's a shared bathroom, and then the, the bathtub was ginormous. Really? And I couldn't figure out how to get it to be a shower. Right. And actually couldn't. Oh. <laughs> so you just, it's either baths or you just kind of sprinkle yourself. Yeah. It was, it was strange. Hmm. I'm so used to showers, I don't take baths. <laughs> <laughs> like, who has time for that? <laughs> it's a European thing. They they find time for things, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I guess they don't have to work as much as we do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder if that's a thing, that bathtubs are bigger in the Czech Republic <laughs> because of the carp I thing. I think it was literally <laughs> just that one place. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, where did we st- Oh, no, we stayed in, like, a hostel. Not a hostel, but, like, a boarding Thing. Boarding place. Yeah. Did they have a bathtub? No. Oh. <laughs> well, you know what sh- they're not getting for shower, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not carp. Not carp. <laughs> yeah, we got lucky because the day we got there was the last day of this like American tourist group. So, oh, nice. man, the people there look so stressed seeing all these Americans being American. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw! I can say that because I'm American. Yeehaw! That was good. The Czech Republic is fun. I'd recommend anybody go there. The one thing that I really remember about walking around in Prague is they have these fish tanks where they 
the little fish that eat dead skin. Okay. And then you pay them, and then you just put what? your feet in them, and then they will eat oh. all the dead skin off your feet. What? <laughs> leaving your feet super soft. Did you try it? No. Because oh. <laughs> I wanted to spend my money on alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Could have done both. Beer is so cheap in the Czech. It was. I, and Republic. I'm a one beer wonder, so. Yeah. I don't know why You'd I didn't be spending do it. like <laughs> 34 crowns for like, I think it was like 15 crowns even in San Chan Van. No? That was cheap. I, I remember. But yeah. I also don't remember a lot because I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, that was a trip. It was great. I just remember one night my friend, I met up with my friend there. Like, I actually didn't know he was going to be in Prague until right. maybe a week before. He's like, oh, you're in Europe. I'm going to Prague on these days. I'm like, me too. Nice. And then we spent two hours because um, our phones didn't really work. Right. Just getting by on <laughs> bad Wi-Fi trying to find churros. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find some? Uh, we found one place, but they were closed by the time we oh got no. there. So. Wouldn't like the turtlenecks or whatever, would that count as like... Turtlenecks? <laughs> Trudelnik. 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 Those are like yeah. Czech churros. Czech churros, I guess. Not quite. They're not fried. They're no, baked. They are <laughs> baked, yes. With a big hole in the middle. Yeah. But they're so good. You put the ice cream ones are especially nice. Ooh, that mm. one I didn't get to try. Yeah. We had gelato and trudelnik, but not at the same time. <laughs> should have mushed them together. Yeah, should have. So, yeah. how would you kill a carp? How would you kill a carp? I don't know. My general Bash thing. Bash it in the head. Yeah. I mean, the bigger it's fish is a little bit tricky. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, generally, when you kill a fish, you just grab a hammer and whack it in the head till it dies. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if the carp, because it's a bigger fish, but I know when we were de- dealing with cod, you just kind of do the same thing. Um, if it's, I know the ling cod's a little bit bigger. We just kind of run a knife down its neck, so it just kind of kills it. Oh. Yeah. Sounds so bloody. Yeah, so either hammer its head or you chop its head off. Uh, <laughs> and you do this for Christmas. Or not you, but yeah, in the much. Czech Republic. Yeah. I mean, side note, I, I can't even remember how to prepare fish anymore. It's <laughs> been only like four months since I stopped doing that. It's like You blocked it out of your memory. Pretty much. But yeah, I mean, carp are generally fairly scaly fish. I think some there are different kinds of common carps, but some of them are pretty scaly. Um, but yeah. We should find a recipe and try this carp yeah you could buy carp here so we could can we buy the european carp pod here probably not carp carp hard cop hard (laughs) no but i'm sure using we'll try it with a regular (laughs) car yeah i mean i looked up czech uh recipes Mm. after i got back i'm like oh goulash is so good right and um i actually couldn't find some of the spices here yeah they use oh uh, I don't remember. Exa- it's some sort of paprika. Right. It's not the kind that we get here. I think Hungarian p- paprika. Yeah, or something like that. I it's think like regular smoked, paprika is. It's like Hungarian. smoked Hungarian Damn. paprika. I don't know. I yeah, we gotta find it. We'll try it. Yeah, we should try it. I'm just. You get to kill it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll have to serve like a big party if we're gonna get a full carp. It's like a that's thirty pound fish. That that's fine. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> we'll see, I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know if we can find. Is, if, if anyone in the Vancouver area knows where to get a live carp, please let us know. <laughs> yes, so we could try this out. Yeah, I'll do the soup. Yeah, why not? I don't really know. Do you marinate it? Do you? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, you. C- it's really. Not, it's not like fish is very hard to marinate compared to other <laughs> things. I don't know. Yeah, I don't so. make fish. <laughs> you kind of just mix it in. It's uh, actually it's more of like it's really good at absorbing flavor when you cook it. So I just cook it. Oh okay. If I remember, pretty sure. At least that's my guess. My experience in cooking. Yeah. Um. Did you have anything else to ask or say about magical <laughs> carps? carps? Uh, if you had a bathtub carp, what would you name it? Hmm. Bob. <laughs> Bob's carp. <laughs> or just Bob. Just Bob. Bob. <laughs> Bob. 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 This, this I'll name him me, Blob. This tickles my travel pickle. <laughs> <laughs> like, last time that I went anywhere, I didn't go with the intention of eating very localized food. Right. But I think Should. I've been enlightened. 
Yeah. And my friend's it's actually in Czech Republic right now. Nice. I should ask him about the yeah. carp. Yeah, you should. Um, yeah, I mean, when we went, we selectively chose not to trust Google with things. Mm. And we just asked the locals where to go. Right. Yeah, Probably yeah. the best thing I'd best idea that's true i mean when we uh, travel general that's kind of what we do is we just even that trip we're like okay we know the four locations we want to end up in and we don't have an itinerary but it was like the best trip ever so no those are the best and people keep out i'm going to amsterdam and people are like oh what are your plans i'm like i don't have one (laughs) yeah it's gonna be great (laughs) just gonna land exactly but like i tell everybody if it's a 24-hour hotel make sure it's not a love hotel (laughs) especially when you're in japan do they have those in Czech Republic, too? I don't know. Yeah. But just keep that in mind. I have travel. stayed at a, a love hotel before. They I were very too. reluctant to give a room to a foreigner. Mm. But I guess I whipped out the money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need a place to stay tonight, and it's getting really late. Yep, <laughs> I did, too. I flew into Japan, and I was trying to find a place that would allow people to come, like check in very late, because I came in at like midnight or whatever. And I found this 24-hour thing, and I'm like, oh, it's a love this hotel. is why. It's 24 <laughs> hours. Uh, it's like looking through the flyers, and that's when it occurred to me. So I'm like, this is not food. <laughs> These are naked women. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> what kind of catalog is this? <laughs> I was so hungry. And, I, and every time I look outside and see footsteps, it's always like an older man with a younger girl walking through. And I'm like, maybe Sketch. I'm just going to sleep in the bathtub today. <laughs> <laughs> with the carp? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that's our episode on Magic Carp. Magic Carps in the Czech Republic. Thanks for listening. Thank you. What are we eating this week? Oh yeah, shoot, what are we eating this week? I'm kinda poor right now. So Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm eating, eating a lot of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cereal? Like nature's path cereal. Oh, stuff. staying healthy. Where are the poor well, loops? <laughs> it was on sale. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Uh, almond milk and cereal. Nice. And Actually, yeah, bacon and eggs. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Similar, <laughs> but I've been eating granola bars that I yeah. swiped from film sets. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, actually, what we, mean, we were in L.A., or I was in L.A. a couple of weeks ago, and they had this HBO party, and they were serving these tacos that were the tiniest tacos I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yummy. <laughs> they were like the size of my pinky bit. I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, too. I remember the tiny tacos. <laughs> yeah. I'm so intrigued. I guess I'm still full by that because I'm so <laughs> broke. <laughs> oh. but anyway, thanks poor for life. <laughs> yep. Poor life. Wait, Support wait. Us. Uh, how much do you think a carp would cost if we were? It's pretty rigid? cheap. I think the grass carp in TNT was like six bucks a pound. Six bucks a pound. Yeah. So we shouldn't get a thirty pounder because that would get yeah, quite pricey. Yeah. Or I think the whole carp was I don't know. Let's, we could check it. I think we should. S- we it's can like scale a twenty down. thirty dollar pa- fish, I think. If I remember. We can we can scale down and make tiny carp. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> like a pretty cheap fish. Topcom. I don't. I think that might actually be more expensive than I'm saying it is. But it's a pretty cheap fish. Mm. But we still have to spend. Yeah. All right. We're gonna make Christmas happen. Yeah. All right. Real soon. Tune in at some point. When we try Christmas this, carp. I don't know. There might be photos. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll just do it all audio. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and now here's the fish, <laughs> and then we can slam it down on the table. Yeah, we'll have it describe. We'll have someone describe it for us. <laughs> It's fish like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, and we need to definitely keep the skills. Yeah. For prosperity. Yes. Good luck. Oh, also recording. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is Morgan's board. board. Have a food-related ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network. We'd love to hear from our fellow foodie listeners. And while you're there, remember to subscribe or follow us too. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Editing by Mick and logo by Angel. Thanks for listening. For more GHN shows like The Monster Slayer's Guide to Slaying Monsters, Come give us a listen at geekhappynetwork.com or look for us on your favorite podcast app. Oh, and be sure to follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Geek Happy Network.